Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about shock. Now by definition, shock occurs when there's an insufficient amount of oxygenated blood at the tissue site, at the level of the tissue. And by definition, that's what shock is. Now here you can see there's at least five descriptions of types of shock and the typical signs and symptoms and, and causes or mechanisms of reduced um, oxygenation to the tissues. But regardless of the nature of the type of shock, they all end up with the same outcome. In other words, the tissues always end up with low levels of oxygen, and if it's not corrected, your patient will become critically unwell and end up dying. So in the context of paramedic practice, when you're doing your primary survey, one of the first things you will do is to try and identify time critical features of your patient. And that's where identifying and rectifying shock comes into it. Because if shock is something that will kill your patient and the primary survey is designed to help you identify any abnormal life threats, then putting the two together, you can see how you need to be able to recognize them. However, it's not always easy to be able to recognize the causes and the nature of shock. I mean, just take a look at this, this chart here that shows at least the different five. And I say at least because it absolutely depends on um, the type of classification system that you're using. So you will see different classification systems. So let's start with hypovolemic. So hypovolemia just means low volume. Now, volume doesn't just relate to blood. It can be any of the fluids inside your body. So whenever there's a low fluid, there's going to be a state of hypovolemia. Now, these patients will end up with low blood pressure, tachycardia, weak sweaty pulse, they are cool, pale, moist skin. Um, now, when we, when we talk about signs and symptoms, there are always going to be different stages of shock. So there's compensated, there's a middle ground where it starts to become uncompensated, then there's the decompensated shock. And this one here, this table kind of shows you a mixture of these rather than going into such specific detail. But with hypovolemic shock, you can expect to find low blood pressure at the end stages, tachycardia from the outset because your body's trying to pump really hard to get the, the blood around the body. The pulse is weak and thready because there's low volume there and eventually it will disappear. The patient will be cool and pale and they will have moist skin um, because they are um, hypoxic. However, if you look at cardiogenic shock, there's some similarities, but also some differences. Now, cardiogenic shock is to do with the heart. So cardiogenic shock occurs when the heart is pumping, but it's not heart pumping effectively enough to pump the blood around the body. Neurogenic shock is, is to do with the nervous system. Take, for example, somebody who has had a road traffic collision and they've injured their nervous system. Anaphylactic, as you know, is caused by the mast cell. In other words, the mast cell degranulates and all the the histamine and the leukos, leukotrienes and the interleukins, they all come out of the cell and cause massive swelling of the airway and the face. And then finally, septic, um, which could also be known as distributive shock, but so could anaphylactic. So again, you can see how there's differences in the way we describe these levels of these types of shock. Okay, so um, I hope you've enjoyed this micro lecture on shock, and I look forward to speaking to you guys again shortly. Take care.